Hello learners, welcome to the environmental science course of NIOS. We know that soil is made by the physical and chemical weathering of rocks. During weathering, underlying the rock breaks into small particles, then water, air and humus get added to the particles to form soil. When soil is degenerated, it loses its fertility and becomes useless for farming. Also it undergoes soil erosion on being exposed on to weather. Soil is then washed off by heavy rain and wind or running water. Desertification and overgrazing, over cultivation are another causes of soil erosion. Soil erosion and wind uh, land degradation together constitute one of the major problem that disturb the ecological balance of the world. During this program, we will discuss about causes, consequences, methods of control for soil erosion and land degradation. Also discuss about various methods of conservation of soil along with control of land degradation. This is lesson 17, conservation of soil and land from module 5, environmental conservation of your course. I am Nilam Gupta, your course coordinator, welcome you in this program. The objective of this program are define soil erosion, types of soil erosion, consequences and prevention of soil erosion, soil erosion caused by human activities, define land degradation, causes of land degradation, consequences and prevention of land degradation. Soil conservation is a set of management strategies for pre preventing soil erosion. It Soil being eroded from the earth surface or becoming chemically altered by overuse, salinization or other chemical soil contamination, water and wind, erosion are main causes of land degradation combined. They are responsible for 84 percent of global, degraded, uh, global degraded land, making erosion one of the significant environmental problem. Rapid increase in human population has placed a great strain on the land and soil resources resulting in land degradation and soil erosion. A pie chart showing percentage of worldwide soil degradation is in blue part shows water erosion which is 56 percent, red part shows wind erosion which is 28 percent, green for chemical degradation which is 12 percent and yellow one shows 4 percent of physical erosion. Now come to soil and land. Soil is of uppermost part of earth crust which when we dug or plowed and in which plant grows. Land is a solid substratum which supports human and many other organisms. Now come to know what is soil erosion and land erosion. Soil erosion is the loosening and displacement of topsoil particles from the land. Soil erosion is a natural process that occur on all lands. Soil erosion may occur at a slow or fast rate. Land degradation is the deterioration in the quality of land. Degradation of land you results in loss of crop production capacity of the land. Now types of soil erosion, it can be classified on the basis of physical agent responsible for erosion. The various types of soil erosion are consequently referred as water erosion and wind erosion. Water erosion, soil erosion by water occurs by means of raindrop, wave or ice. Soil erosion by water is termed differently according to the intensity and nature of erosion. Water erosion is of various type as shown in figure. Water erosion can be occur due to raindrop, sheet, rail, stream bank, landslide and coastal erosion, we will discuss one by one. Raindrop initiates water erosion because after all, after falling on land surface raindrops cause detachment of soil particles, these particles are washed away by flowing water, raindrops behave like tiny bombs when falling on exposed soil, displace soil particles and destroy soil structure. Presence of vegetation on land prevents raindrops from falling directly on the soil. Thus, erosion of soil in area covered by vegetation is prevented. With continued rainfall, the displaced and soil particles fill in the space between soil particles and so prevent water from seeping in the soil. After some time, this result in accumulation of water called ponding on the land. This water begins to flow. This flowing water is called runoff and this muddy due to displaced soil particles in it. As the water moves in further erodes the soil surface. Sheet erosion, the detachment and transportation of soil particles by flowing. Rainwater is called sheet or wash of erosion. This is very slow process and often remain not noticed. Rail erosion, in rail erosion finger like rails appears on the cultivated land after, the, after it has undergone sheet erosion. These rails are usually smoothened on out every year 
while forming. Each year, the rills slowly increase in number, become, become wider and deeper. When rills increase in size, they are called gullies. Ravines are deep gullies. Now, stream bank erosion. The erosion of soil from the bank of the streams or river due to the flowing water is caused bank erosion. In certain areas, when river changes its course, the river banks get eroded as it rapidates. Stream bank erosion damages the adjoining agricultural land, highways, and bridges. Now, landslide, sudden mass movement of soil is called landslide. Landslide occur due to instability or loss of balance of landmass with respect to gravity. Loss in balance occurred mainly due to excessive water or moisture in the earth mass. Gravity acts on such an unstable landmass and causes the large chunk of surface materials such as soil and rocks slide down rapidly. Now coastal erosion. Coastal erosion of soil occurs due along seashores. It is caused by the wave action of the sea and the inward movement of the sea into the land. Now consequences of soil erosion. Erosion removes the fertile part of the soil and the bulk of nutrient and organic matter are lost. The fertile soil substance is left. Sheet rail gully also cause siltation of rivers, stream and fields. Disposition of soil silt resulted in damage of crop and pasture and sedimentation of water bodies like streams, dams, reservoirs, etc. Sedimentation of water bodies deteriorate water quality and damage aquatic habitat and organisms. Gully erosion result in less loss of the large volume of soil, uh, soil. Wider deep gullies sometimes reach 3, 30 meters and thus limit land use. Stream bank erosion not only causes loss of soil or land, but also changes the occur course of the river or stream. Due to erosion, the soil becomes bare because the seeds of sea or seeds of sea or seedlings are removed. This way, our soil is very vulnerable to erosion by wind or water. Removal of seeds reduces the ability of soil in to store water. Landslides also inhibits from farm production and land use. It also causes major mortality in animals and humans. Now, come to the prevention of soil erosion. Vegetation. Vegetation cover is important because roots of plants hold soil particles together. To prevent stream bank erosion, runoff water should be stored in the catchment by maintaining vegetation cover and by constructing dam for storing water. For prevention or reduction of coastal erosion, protective vegetation along the beaches should be reestablished. The best method of controlling coastal dune erosion is not to disturb the dunes and the coastal system. So this is all about soil erosion. Now come to wind erosion. Soil erosion by wind occurs in arid and dry areas where natural vegetation has been destroyed. It is a major source of land degradation, desertification and crop damage, especially after being increased by human activities such as deforestation, urbanization, etc. This occurs in sandy shores of oceans, lakes and rivers. The loose particles are blown and transported from wind by three ways. Siltation where particles are lifted a short height into the air and bounce and salted across the sur surface of soil. Suspension transported over long distances in the form of suspended particles. Surface creep transported at ground level by high velocity wind. Siltation is responsible for 50 to 70 percent of wind erosion followed by suspension 30 to 40 percent and then surface creep 5 to 25 percent. Now consequences of wind erosion, it removes the finer soil material including organic material, clay and silt in the in a suspension form and leaving behind coarser, less fertile material. Productive cap capacity of the soil is lost, which remain attached. Smaller colloidal soil fraction are lost. Wind erosion also damages roads and fertile agriculture fields by depositing large quantities of air blown soil particles. Now remedial strategies, the vegetation cover over sandy soil should be kept above 30 percent. Access of wind to the soil should be controlled by leaving the stubble or mulch on the soil. Stubble is the remain of crop left after harvesting. Wind speed can be controlled by planting tree in form of a sheet shelter belt. 
The practice of leaving the land fallow and use machinery should be modified. Overgrazing by cattle should be avoided. Now come to the soil erosion caused by human activities. The agricultural practices contribute greatly to erosion, the tillage of agricultural land, which means breaking up soil into fine particles in one of the primary factor. Problem has been increased in modern time due to mechanized agricultural equipment that allows deep plowing, which increases the amount of soil that is available for transport by water erosion. Tillage also increases wind erosion rate by dehydrating the soil and breaking it into smaller particles that can be picked up by the wind. Soil erosion can be caused by humans also as seen in figure. We can say human activities that accelerate soil erosion such as deforestation, mining, farming, cultivation on mono, uh, mountain slope, monoculture etc. Now come to deforestation, mining, farming, development work are caused soil erosion. Deforestation is the direct or indirect human induced conversion of forested land to non-forested land. It includes cutting and felling of trees, removal of forest litter. Deforestation leads to erosion. Deforestation further leads to land degradation, nutrient and the disruption of the delicate soil plant relationship. Agriculture is a major human activity that causes soil erosion. Crops are grown, harvested, land creep load exposed to wind and rain intermittently. All the prevents replenished of moisture. Agriculture also causes the worst type of soil erosion on farmland in the form of wash up or sheet erosion. On the arid and semi-arid areas, sand blows and sand shifts act in a similar fashion as sheet erosion does. When water is the chief agent, consequently a creeping effect of desertification sets in and the fertility of the land is lost progressively the various cultural practices can lead to accelerate soil erosion. Plowing or tilling is the process of loosening and turning of soil done by using a plow. The soil is overturned and aerated by plowing. Tilling or plowing increases the chances of erosion because it disturbs the natural soil surface and protective vegetation. Continuous cropping of the same land and extended crop cultivation of marginal and submarginal land increases soil erosion. Cultivation on mountain slope without appropriate land treatment measures such as bounding, terracing and trenching cause soil erosion and loss of soil nutrients. Monoculture refers to the practice of planting of the same variety of crop in the field. It can be lead to soil erosion in three ways. A monoculture crop is harvested at all at one time which leaves the entire field bare exposing it on both water and wind. Without vegetation, rainfall, natural rainfall is not retained by the soil and flows rapidly over the surface rather than into the ground. It also came away the topsoil which results in soil erosion and degradation. In the event any disease or paste invades the field, the entire crop is usually wiped out leaving the bare soil susceptible to water and wind. Now overgrazing, it means too many animals are allowed it to feed on a piece of grassland. Trampling and grazing by cattle destroyed the vegetation of the area. In the absence of adequate vegetation, vegetative cover, the land becomes highly susceptible to both water and wind erosion. Now economic activities, soil erosion also occurs due to economic activities, the extraction of useful natural resources such as metals, minerals and fossil fuels from the land causes serious disturbance of, to the land leading to soil erosion and drastic changes in the landscape. Soil erosion may also occur because of various development of activities as a housing such as housing, transport, communication, recreation etc. Building construction also promote soil erosion because aerated soil erosion takes place during construction of houses, roads, rail tracks etc. Now land degradation. Land degradation is a process in which the value of the biophysical environment is affected by the combination of human induced processes acting upon the land. It causes the change or disturbance to the land which is undesirable. It is estimated that up to 40 percent of the world's agricultural land is seriously degraded. Land degradation has impact on the environment around it. It, it causes a loss or change in vegetative cover and soil nutrients. 
Degraded land is classified on the basis of productive capacity of the land. Slight degradation refers to the condition that where crop yield potential is reduced by 10 percent. Moderate degradation refers to 10 to 50 percent reduction in yield potential and in severely de degradation means the land has yield potential is lost, um, lost more than 50 percent. Now causes of land degradation, wind and water erosion are two primary causes. Combined they are responsible for 80 percent of degraded land. This explains in two diagrams some major causes of land degradation are use of agrochemicals, chemical fertilizers and pesticides, cultivation of high yielding plant varieties and excessive irrigation. Some other causes of land degradation are deforestation, overgrazing, commercial development, quarrying of sand, ore and mineral, monoculture and soil erosion. Now agrochemicals and their harmful effect on land. Agrochemicals are applied to the soil with for two main reasons namely to replenish or replace soil nutrients by using chemical fertilizers, destroy plant waste by using toxic chemicals called pesticides. The adverse effect of use of chemical fertilizers, plants take up nutrients from the soil, repeated crop cultivation depletes nutrients in the soil, removed from it therefore nutrients in soil have to be augmented periodically by applying chemical fertilizer. However, excess use of chemical fertilizers and pesticides leads to the several problems. Widespread imbalance in the soil nutrients, most of the chemical fertilizers used in modern agriculture contains macronutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. Excessive addition of NPK to the soil however causes the plant to absorb more micronutrients from the soil. As a result, soil become deficient in micronutrients like iron, zinc, copper, etc. and the soil productivity is decreases. Eutrophication of water bodies, fertilizers which is not used by plants is washed down by washed down with rainwater and carried into water bodies resulting in eutrophication or algal bloom leading to death of aquatic life. Come to the health problems, about one fourth of the applied fertilizer is not used by the crop plants and is leased down by this down into the soil and underground water aquifer, the chemical which usually leaches down is nitrate. Increased concentration in the drinking water may cause serious health problem. Excess nitrogen, nitrates in water is harmful especially to water fed infants in which it causes the disease blue baby disease or methemoglobinemia. The adverse effect of the use of plant protection chemicals, toxic you, chemicals are used to kill paste of civil, uh, cultivated crops. Toxic chemicals like insecticide, herbicide, fungicides, rodenticides are generally used to kill insects, weed, fungi and rodents in order to protect crop plants from their attack. These poisonous chemicals are collectively called biocides. They are not selective that is they not only kill the target paste but may also kill another non-target and other useful organisms. Moreover, biocides tend to remain active long after destroying the target of organisms such as paste, weeds, fungi or rodents. It is persistent that makes these chemicals harmful to us. Continue application of biocides causes various problems which areas. They contaminate food materials and drinking water. They disturb the balance of the natural ecosystem by killing non-target often useful. The continuous use of biocides results in a gradual increase of the immunity of the paste to do these chemicals. The biocides after a period of time become ineffective against the paste leading to excessive multiplication of the paste. Most of these chemicals are persistent non-biodegradable and so they persist in the plant or animal body once they enter the food chain. Their concentration in the organisms multiplies progressively through the food chain due to biological magnification organisms. Now problems due to excessive irrigation. Over irrigation by careless farmers results in water logging and salinity which ruins crops. This problems has destroyed more than 3 million hectares of farming land in North India. Now water logging, excessive irrigation of land without proper drainage raises the water table. This causes the soil to become drenched 
with water or waterlogged. This waterlogged soil cannot support good plant growth due to lack of air, particularly oxygen in the soil, which is essential for respiration of plant roots. Waterlogged soil lack mechanism, mechanical strength and cannot support the weight of plants which fell down and gets blocked, thus become submerged in the mud. This result in loss of productivity of the soil. Now salt affectation, in areas of high temperature, excessive irrigation of land usually causes the accumulation of salt in the soil. This is because water evaporates fast leaving behind traces of salt in the soil. As cycles of irrigation are repeated, the left over salt accumulates and forms the thick layer of gray or white effervescence on the surface. The productivity of salt affected soil is low. Plant in saline soil are unable to absorb nutrient and so far face water stress even when moisture is abundant in the soil. Now impact of high yielding varieties, HYVs of plants have been raised and modified by means of various breeding techniques in order to increase productivity. The HYVs require adequate irrigation and extensive use of fertilizers, pesticides to be stressed successful as it has been discussed earlier. Land degradation occurs due to use of chemical fertilizers, pesticides, etc. Now, agriculture technologies for preventing soil degradation. Conservation of soil cultivable land cause can be achieved not only through preventive and remedial measures in order to control soil, land erosion and degradation, about which you will read in the next section, but also by using innovative agriculture technologies which involve use of organic farming or green manure, it is a system which avoids or largely excludes the use of synthetic inputs like fertilizers, pesticides, hormone, etc. Rely upon crop rotation, crop residue, manure, organic waste, etc. instead of apply, applying chemical fertilizers for supplementing the nitrogen content of soil. We can use the natural process that involves the use of nitrogen fixing bacteria in the legume roots nodule. In addition to this, the use of organic forms of fertilizers such as cow dung, agriculture waste also improves the nutrient status of soil. This may also help to reduce the excessive and prolonged use of chemical fertilizers and this may minimize the, their toxic effects. Protecting characters of organic farming, protecting the long term fertility of soil by maintaining organic metal labels, nitrogen self sufficiency through use of legumes and biological nitrogen fixation. Crop rotation is used to control pest disease and weeds that can become established in the soil over time by changing crop rotation, pest cycles can be broken. This principle is used in organic farming where pest control must be achieved without synthetic pesticides. Crop rotation is the practice of growing series of dissimilar or different types of crops in the same area. In sequence season, it reduces soil erosion and increases soil fertility. Now biofertilizers, microorganisms are important constituent of fertile soil. They participate in the development of soil structure, add to the available nutritional elements and improve the physical condition of the soil. A large variety of the beneficial microorganisms are microorganisms are being used as biofertilizers. Biofertilizers act either by fixing atmospheric nitrogen or by solubilizing soil phosphorus. Now biological control. In farming, biological paste control is the paste, uh, method of controlling paste using minimal or no chemical intervention. Pesticides are chemicals which have been developed to kill or control organisms called paste, which are destructive insects or other animals that attack crop, food, livestock, etc. Biological paste control employs various natural methods for protecting plants from invasive and harmful paste. The biological control agents of paste do not enter the food chain or poison animal and so are not likely to harm mankind. Biological control of paste is an ecologically sound alternative to paste, chemical paste control. The natural predator and parasites of paste play important role in controlling plant paste. They are used by farmers to control plants, paste, aphids, scale insects, mealybug and mites are controlled by its predator, the ladybird beetle. Now measures for preventing soil erosion and land degradation. First tree planting to prevent wind erosion, trees should be planted in such a way so that they break the 
force of the wind. The tree not only cover soil from the sun, wind or water, they also help to hold the soil particles. Cultivation and farming techniques, certain cultivation and farming techniques also reduce soil erosion. They include cultivation of land at the right angle of, to the direction of the wind, help to reduce soil erosion by wind. Plowing style, plowing style substantially reduces the amount of erosion, tilling the field at right angle to the slope called contour plowing. plowing. It helps to prevent or reduce soil erosion. The ridges that are created hold the water and help its seepage into the soil. Instead of let it run down the slopes, causing soil pollution, contour plowing can reduce soil erosion by up to 50 percent. Strip farming, this involves planting the main crops in widely spaced rows and filling the spaces with another crop to ensure complete ground cover. The ground is completely covered, so it retards water flow which thus soaks down into the soil, consequently reducing erosion problems. Terracing, it is another method of reducing the or preventing soil erosion. On mountain slope, in this method, steps are cut out or the, on the slope making terraces. Terraces is usually done by on slopes by labeling of areas on the slope to prevent the flow of water directly down to the hill. Nodal cultivation is used as a preventive method for soil erosion. Specialized machineries are available that can loosen the soil and plant sheets and take care of weed control at all at once with minimum disturbance of the soil. Since all of these aspects are taken care of at one time, there is less time for erosion to occur. In this system, crops are planted into untilled soil by opening narrow slot of sufficient width and depth to obtain seed coverage. Polyvarietal cultivation also helps in controlling soil erosion. In this method, the field is planted with several varieties of the same crop as the harvested time vary for different varieties in, of the crops. The entire field is not harvested at one time and so it is not bare or exposed at all. Once then the land remains protected from erosion. In addition to or, organic matter to the soil is also an important method for reducing soil erosion. Microbes in the soil decompose the organic matter and produce polysaccharides which are sticky and act in gluing in the soil particles together and thus help the soil to resist soil erosion. Dear learners, this is all about lesson 17, conservation of soil and land. We will come again to meet you with a new program of environmental science. Thank you.